Okay, okay. no. Yeah, that's right. Everyone out here needs it. Come on up, guys. We'll show you how this is laid out. So fire room is over here. This is the only place that we're going to have fire until the structure actually gets going. Inside of here, you've got another door that will open. Please, when you're opening and closing the doors, hold on to the house at the same time. We've had guys that want to pull the whole freaking house over with it. Um, and we'll tell you, we'll tell you, open and close. Um, fire room A, B, this is your VEIS room. This room up here, we've caulked it off, so there should be basically no, no space for the, for the heat and smoke to come out. We're still going to get a lot of smoke in here, so start thinking heating up and off gassing. We'll talk about BEIS and all the things that go into it when you're going to go into the room. You can open and close this. Your other room up and down, second floor. So between the second floor and the first floor, if you guys want to take a look in here, he's got a scuttle you can pull. Then we're going to vent the roof. So we'll talk about the best way to get fire growing, the, uh, the best way to, to put fire out. And you have to translate all the information that we give you. We're telling you how to make a fire grow. We're also going to at the same time, just by doing the opposite, we're going to tell you how to knock the fire down. We'll talk about tactical 360s. We have two screws over here. You guys see the screws? One in the fire room down here, one in the VEIS room. Those are in there. You have any metal protrusion sticking through the building. As an officer, you're doing your walk around. Those are heat sinks. So you have doorknobs, you have uh, your water spigots, anything sticking through the building that's metal, take a look at those and if they're starting to heat up, you'll actually see it, that start to turn white on your, on your grayscale, on your thermal imaging cameras. We're gonna talk about 360s. Um, we're gonna talk about the two different types of 360s, the guys at the door versus the officer doing a 360 and then putting all the information together and we'll get there. You guys ready? Helmets on, Nomex, everybody's good. Gloves on too, please. So 360s, we'll do one initially when it first, first starts. Um, so we'll do a 360, we'll throw an ambulance guy to do the neutral plane assessment. And then when it starts going, we'll do it again to see how that changes a tactic. And then once it really starts going, we'll do it once more and that'll change tactic again, saying go, no go, what do we, what do we gotta do to change? Barry, you wanna light it up? Glasses, gloves, everything but a hood. I didn't run that you guys all saw, saw that there's a door in between the fire room and the other bottom floor. We're gonna keep that closed for now. What kind of, uh, what kind of floor are we getting? What, what, what stage is the fire at right now? It's starting to grow. What kind of, what kind of flow are we getting? Yeah. Nearby. Air in, exhaust out. Air in, exhaust out. So starting to grow inside. They're in the fire room? Yeah. Hold on, I'll I want to do one at a time. Get one wet here. Uh, I need some water on here, please. So the engineers drink up the water. Keep going. Keep going. All right. So one, one sponge. Damn. What this signifies is you guys are wetting down the room, right? Remember, we're going to control that. From the first door we go through, once we start seeing that heat signature, the thermals, we're gonna control that room and all that space as we go where the hose line's going because the air's coming in with us. So close the door. Now, talk about a basement fire. We open this door and then we open the back door. Now, where's the air gotta come in from? It's gotta, gotta come, come in. The way. The air from the second floor down, down to the down basement. To the basement. It's it's push from back up. So down. think about it as friction loss. It's gotta come in. It's got to fight its way down through this room. We got this door open yet? Yeah, Pop that door open. Door. Would you please? So it's got to fight its way down through. Fire's got to grow, and then it's got to build up and build the exhaust. Got to come out the same spot. So even more inefficient. And the farther it's got to fight, 
the more efficient it's going to be. So if we close this one and we open the roof, make it even pull down farther, the fire will go slower. It will go slower. Now, what happens when the door fails? Yeah, the chimney. So when the door fails down below, now we've got a chimney effect, so what's it going to do that for? Grow. It's actually going to grow it faster. <laughs> go ahead. So once he opens it, pop it open all the way there. It's going to get going a little bit. So now that fire will get going faster. Now thermal imaging camera is going to do a walk around. We're walking around the building. So bring them around. We're looking for cues and clues as we go. Don't forget, as you're coming up to the building, you're looking at the building and reading the building overall. So your windows, your doors, your your vent stacks and older houses, um, all of that should give you a, a layout of what that building looks like inside. Once Where do they put inside. windows up high? Now, we're adding in reading smoke, volume, velocity, density, and color. Thickest, blackest, nastiest, pushing smoke, typically closest to the seat of the fire. We're also looking for those cues and clues we had talked about with the windows when we're inside. The melting blinds, the crazy glass, the, the, the heat signature on the glass with the thermal cameras. And then we're looking at the screws here. Are the screws starting to light up different? Well, that whole side is white now. So the whole side is white. That's so on the camera, sure. let him see the camera here also. So the whole side is white, which is showing you you're getting heat. A little bit of difference in heat here versus here. Right. Once it gets going, you can actually look at the building itself. If the building isn't really tight, you can actually see the flow path on the thermal camera where it's going. Cool. So what are you getting out of the roof? You're starting to get fire growth, you're starting to get thermals pushing, right? Yeah. All right that's what so we're going to close this up, and then we're going to try and show you guys a little bit of water on this floor, a little bit of water on this floor, and show you... in that BEIS room and then we'll put a little water in here and we'll show you guys about the cooling on the floor and we can see it when you spray that room down and then we'll show you the outline of the, the hole on the floor. You can see that with the thermal camera once you put water on the floor. Show you some cues and clues how to pick that up. How are we looking? Have some more paper there, would you? Pump it up, throw it in there. Coupon for uh, Burger King tab, you want that? No, I'm more McDonald's. So again, look at your convective currents now. Remember the push we we're talking about? So look at it coming out of the roof. Bigger fire, how much more convective currents are we getting? So you should be able to see that with your thermal camera. Now picture those going horizontal. They build up and they're coming horizontal down the, down the hallway towards you because you just opened up the door. Air is coming in. <laughs> Those thermal currents and that, all that heat has to have somewhere to go. It builds up on the ceiling. Again, it's like water building up upside down in the building. So, um, fills up that ceiling and it's all coming towards you because you just opened the door. Air in, exhaust out. Again, control those as you go. Own that room. Room by room by room, own it. When I say own it, spray some water in there, cool it down, make it safer for you. Make it better for victims inside. So fire is starting to grow. So we're going to close off the roof. We're going to close off the attic here. The so start. Somebody give me a fog nozzle there. Fog nozzle, I want you to spray in here on the floor. Why are we getting smoke in here? Sealed off roof. Okay. Starting to burn, starting to off gas. Remember, things have to dry out and create smoke and steam, or create gases, and the gases throw a bunch of water in there. Bunch of yep, there you go. I thought you'd have all a over the whole floor. made out of McDonald's straws or something. All right, now same thing in this room over here. 
whole bunch of whole bunch of water all over the floor. Just spray it all over in there. Now thermal cameras, especially the newer ones, you got to turn them upside down. Come on over here and take a look in this room, and then take a look in this room and tell us what you see. Now you should see pooling in here. Get it right up to your face. Yeah. Yep. And then in here, you should see the convective currents. Now stand back just a little bit. You should see the convective currents coming through the hole and the outline of the hole if you, you look for it. There, now you're going to see the convective currents better. Now remember, zero visibility conditions, the, the less visibility we have, the closer the camera gets to your face. Can you see the convective currents coming out? And can you see the outline of the hole? Mm -hmm. Because we put water in there, it should darken it down. If you want to spray a little more water on that second floor there, Benny? Yeah. Get it all over the floor. Talk about reading smoke. You can now see that smoke's coming out a little darker up top, right? Yeah. So if we want to control that push, we can control the door down here. Is it standing out? Can you guys see that? Yeah. So the reason that was so important is think about what happened up north. So they had the fire come in. Sean's on his knee and he's going foot first. They had a hole between him and Paul. Didn't see the hole, zero visibility conditions. They saw the heat, they saw what they were doing. They start making their way in, they're spraying water the whole time. They didn't have a ton of heat, not enough to push them back out, but all of a sudden his toe, once his toe started to go through, was the first time that they, they saw the floor failing. So he pushed his toe through. Now think about what he did. He did a couple great things there. He put a lot of water in to cool it down first. They checked the environment. They didn't catch the hole in the floor, but his weight is primarily back. If my, I'm a little little heavier than I used to be, my heaviness is that I'm, I'm crawling forward and I'm pulling that line. If I pull that line and I get my hand out and I, my hand goes in the hole, what's happening to me? I'm going down. So we're trying to give you a couple things. One is the way we're crawling. If you, can, if you have to get lower, you get lower. And two is spray some water in there to see the environment before you go in. Look for those cues and clues. Look for that sagging floor. Look for that, for that uh, hole in the floor with the convective currents coming through it. How about the color of the smoke? How are we doing now? Darker. It's going to light off yet? Darker. Volume. We've Push got our torch. Where's our torch? Who wants to be a torch man? Anybody? Anybody? I'll do it. So you're going to try and light off, you're going to try and light off smoke as we go. So it's out. Just get it in there, light it up. You got to turn it all the way open, otherwise that valve sucks. There we go. So anything yet? Nothing yet. All right, back it back out. Let's let it get going a little bit. So fire is getting going, getting that chimney effect. Let's close the second floor up and let's open to get the true, true chimney going. So we pop the, pop the roof and pop the chimney. Now with the second light off yet? Getting close. Right. Getting closer, right? So we're looking for thick, dark, black, nice chugging in that smoke. It's actually going to get silky. It's going to get to that right mixture before it starts to light up. Now it's getting ready. So now you can see it. Now it's starting to take off. Now don't forget this flame, if we have smoke pouring out this room, can actually light it here and pull it back down or this smoke can get lit and pulled back all the way through here. So we got the fire going now. Let's turn that off. Turn that, pull that away, Benny. What's the easiest way to knock that fire down? Smother it. Down. Smother it. Water in the front door, close the front door. So let's do five seconds of water. Somebody close the front door behind it. to our smoke? What happened to our velocity? The color of the smoke. Velocity slowed down quite a bit and the color of the smoke went to nothing. So if we control that front door rather than taking it off the hinges, how much better is it for us? Velocity. Right? Old days when we first got hired, the, the tradition was the truck, the truck got there, the door came off the freaking hinges. Now control the front door from 30 years ago to today. Different, different mindset. Also things are burning a lot faster, a lot hotter. Um, a lot different. So we have a wet sponge and a dry sponge. Let's talk about that. So come on around to the front door here. Close up the uh, attic, the roof, the second floor there. Can you reach in and close that door? So we'll let the fire get going again. 
What kind of uh, what kind of flow do we have here? This shows it really good today because it's dry. This room is sealed up, so you're fifty percent neutral plane. Air in, exhaust out, fire growth. You can see the see it starting to chug, starting to get a little bit hotter. So one is wet, and one is dry. So once this gets going, we're going to show you guys owning that room. We say owning that room again. You're seeing those convective currents coming over your head. You're spraying water as you go, and you're owning that space. Because what's realistically going to happen with door control? is the first crew through. Yeah, you might have a guy at the front door pulling hose in and cl closing the door for you on your crew. He's gonna, He's gonna advance up. Next crew through is gonna be, all right, we'll push the door open. If they remember to kick the hose off to the side and close the door, God bless them. Sometimes it doesn't happen. The next hose line's coming in, the door's wide open. That door is wide open, you're just about to make it to the fire. Air is rushing in, you're just about to make it to the fire room. So air in, fire growth, and we all talked about what we got inside. So, we getting going yet? We need more fuel. You want to throw some more of that uh, stuff underneath there in there? There he is. All smiles. Danger. Ambulance dusty. Fire's taking a little bit long to grow. Best way to grow it. Make it a chimney, right? Let's make it a chimney. So stairs are open. Attic is open. Is the gap, is the gap between the two rooms open? That's the door in between it. Yeah, part open. All right, so now we're starting to get the push. What's happening to our fire? Growing. Kevin, did you show them our little mushroom thing? Mushroom vent. I forgot to point this out, guys. There's a hole right up here. Represents the mushroom vent. You can actually see the push coming out of it. Remember, fire builds up heat and builds up pressure. So that's just a mushroom vent. You can see it with your thermal camera much better than you can see it with anything else. Right up here, Bert. So fire's starting to grow. Let's get these sponges in here and let's talk about owning that space. I can hear it's starting to crack. Torch. So also think about this being the front door. If you're inside to take that front door to test in that neutral plane, you're gonna be here looking while the officer's doing the 360 reading the bill. You guys come together and compare your what you saw and decide where the fire's at and what your plan of attack is. Front door, he shows up, 50% neutral plane, stuff pushing out. What floor is the fire on? 50% neutral plane at the front door. Probably that floor. Higher. Probably that floor, right? So upper, upper third is probably second floor. Two thirds and below is probably floor below. He takes the front door, he opens the front door. Um, he can, if, he, if he has a hose line there, and he, he doesn't have the front door open, can you spray, instead of spraying the hose line on the front yard, take the water and spray it on the door. If it steams, what does it tell you? Top behind the door, you know, you know it's pretty damn hot. The other thing we can do is take a little water. Even without your officer there, if he tells you pull a hose line to the front door and charge it, take a little water. If we throw a little water in there and close the door, it's going to snuff the fire. Gonna make reset it, make it that much safer for us. Then the officer comes around, he tells you, listen, I did my 360, I see first floor fire, BC corner. You say, yeah, I got 50% neutral plane, we got a lot of push out the front door, uh, everything is jiving and you make your plan of attack. If you threw a little bit of water in there, it gives you that a couple seconds to make your plan of attack. Everybody gears up, ready to go, and in we're going. So let's talk about... You can also think about, so this started charring, right? I spray some water on the outside just to save the house, but it, takes, but it takes that much longer for this to start burning again. Why did that just pop off? Yeah. Absolutely. So we get to a fire that's pretty sealed up, close the attic up. That thing is nice and hot. Buildings are getting tighter nowadays. We get there and we're getting heat pushing out, but we don't have any visible flame. You want to think about the chairs off-gassing, everything in there off-gassing, that no, that's lower good. 50% or 90% of your uh, fire load. Heat and pressure now looking for any way out. And it's looking for air. We get to the front door, 
we open the front door, how long is it going to take till that thing explodes? We don't know. Depending on the pressure and the temperature we have in there, it might be quick, it might not be. And just lit off the whole room in seconds. The tighter the opening, the more pressure usually pushes out. Uh, the first day we did this, we had a 10-foot fireball coming out. The training officer was out there. He goes, ah, I think we're wearing gear for this one. So <laughs> that's why we're in here. Paper and wood. In the house is, you got controllers, right? You got, you got couches, mattresses, chairs. So this room is going pretty good. We all agree? Yep. So one damp, one dry. So damp one, dry one. I'll take a look at them. If you want to stand right here in front, buddy, you can watch them. Come on over here. Just right down in there. You can see the sponges back there go from down, down and in. So what's the dry one doing? Taking off already. Wet one's still intact. If you guys can see it, you guys can look yeah. down in here. So that was that was three seconds of water from one of these pumpkins and wringing it out as dry as we could, sticking it in there. The wet one you can see is still intact. So take a look down in the corner if you guys haven't seen it. What that exaggerates is that tells you guys is on that environment. If you put a little bit of water on my wife's couch when you get to our house, she's gonna say I have insurance. I'm gonna get new shit with smoke damage anyway. Let's make it safer for you guys when you're going in doing your thing, okay? Yeah. That wet one's still still in there. What's also happening in the color of the smoke? It's changing. What did we put in there? Different than we had before. Why? Sponges. So it's petroleum products versus wood yeah. products. Wood products you're typically going to get. Let's open up the. What do you want to open? Yeah. Let's think about. Let's think about Woo! you going in here. So can we do that again? So think about this. You control the environment, right? You put some water in here. You go in the front door, and that window pops while you're in there. Now you create it from that bi-directional to the unidirectional. You saw that light a little, a little bit after. So. That could be from windows getting above 500 degrees where they crack on their own, or a truck crew from Schomburg comes through and knocks out all the windows <laughs> while you're in there. Let's close, so, let's close that door and do a basement fire for them. Let's get them nice and hot. So open up the stairs with my open, please. That's where that term coordinated fire attack comes from. So engine and truck companies got to work together. They got to know what each other are is doing. Is this getting ready to light off or is there torch gas? Yeah, right here. So look at the color of smoke. You're seeing outside. Your red team don't think they're not doing anything. And watch it, just burning outside where it's getting the air, eventually it'll burn back in. Now let's open the basement door. Let's close this up, get a little smoke going, hold on. So let it just let it chug. Now we're gonna make that basement attack. We, the bottom door fails. So we how long is it gonna take to pop off? We don't know. There, there it goes. But not very long. Just about one or three or four stairs down. Then it went from bi-directional to unidirectional. Remember we went from air in exhaust out to unidirectional all the exhaust coming out we do not want to get between the fire and where it wants to go if you're doing ventilation outside if you're that vent team um, don't forget there's five ways to vent we'll talk about that in just a second be sure that you're getting communication whether it's through the bc or it's direct to that interior crew that they're in a safe spot when you're going to open something up or make something happen five ways to vent we talk about that Anti-ventilation, close it up, close the door. That lets the air get sucked out of the room. So let's close it up. What happens to our fire? It's sucking everything it can out of, that, out of that house, right? Number two, what we usually do is horizontal ventilation. We chuck a rock through the window. We're gonna get pressure and heat, it's gonna go out. Pressure and heat, hot wants to go to cold, high pressure wants to go to low. That's your physics lessons for today. That's going to be static ventilation is what I call it. You're just going to get a certain amount of ventilation in whatever size hole you make. You're also going to get air coming in. Next one is vertical. Do we do vertical in Hoffman Estates? Very rarely. Very rarely. Think about your truck crew. So your engine in Hoffman Estates were about between two and three minutes, hit the brakes, water on the fire inside the house. To get a truck crew to throw two ladders, start their saws, do everything else on a one-story house, the best crew we have it's probably your guys that are doing construction every day, your Kurzawinskis, your Shawns are on ladders, they're very comfortable. They're gonna run up and down the ladders, saws, they're gonna be cutting the hole as soon as they hit the roof. 
Me, I'm on that, that B team now. I'm getting a little older, a little fatter, a little slower. Um, I'm probably going to be, they're going to be in the 8 to 10, 12 minute range. I'm going to be in that 15 minute range. Your C team, you don't even want to watch them on the roof. And that's just the way it is because we don't do it enough. Now where does that type of ventilation kick ass in what type of building? So big structures, think about your warehouse. How long does it take the hose line to get to the seat of the fire? Find your standpipe, drag 300 feet of hose, whatever you got to do takes a long time. The truck crew on the other hand walks up, they start pounding the roof, they look with a thermal camera, boom, that's your hottest, your hottest vent point. They see a big skylight, they're standing up there for 10 minutes going, what are you guys doing? We're ready, you know. That's where it's got, that's where, keep that one in the back of your head, that's where it's going to take it, uh, advantage of it. Um, the next one is PPA or PPV. Charge the structure, so we're filling up the balloon. Again, air in, over pressurize it. You have to have a clear flow path through. Double the vent as you do the inlet. That way it's not gonna over pressurize and blow back out the front door. We've all seen that happen. We use that sometimes for overhaul. We don't use it for attack anymore. In some places in the country, they still do. The last one is a hose line. Negative pressure. You stick the vent out the window. You're pulling all that stuff across us. We typically do that only after the fire. Fire's knocked down, we have a hose in our hand, we're gonna pull three, 5,000 CFM, we can see what we're doing. Somebody stands there and holds it. Now the difference between the two is, think of, you got three rooms. You got a, a bedroom, bedroom, bedroom here. All three were on fire, you got hallway coming in. Positive pressure during overhaul, you're pushing air out all of these rooms equally. So if I work in this room, this room lights up, it's still gonna be pushing the stuff out. Negative pressure, if I have somebody holding a hose line in this room, they're pulling the air in, they're pulling it in from the, the closest, easiest point. So it's pulling in across those other coals. You have to start farther away and work towards the negative pressure when you're doing overhaul that way. Because these will light up and get somebody hurt. Have your guy with a thermal camera watching those other rooms start farther away, knock the fire down, and then work towards the, towards the vent. Um, let's get it going again. So now you guys, we want you guys, so get two guys on the lines. We want a torch guy. Uh, we want somebody in back controlling the three back here. So we have roof, attic, and stairs in the back. So somebody call it out. We have fire room, B, E, I, S, A, and B. All right. Somebody's going to call it out, and you guys are going to open it up. Let's get this thing rocking. What's the most effective way to get it rocking? Open it up. Open it up. Open it up. Make it happen. Open the attic. That door open the window. All right, so is the door open in between and are the stairs yeah, the open? Roof. So roof is open, attic's open. Let's leave that roof and attic. Stairs are not yet. Are the attic's stairs open stairs? already? The stairs are open too. The stairs are open. Okay. okay, we got fire now. Starting to get you shot, right? or bi-directional? Unidirectional. Unidirectional. We the We're back. sucking air in on the low spot. Look up top, who's our torch guy? Check in ready to light? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Another thing quick guys on construction, you have windows, you got a bunch in the wind, you, you get one high. What does that high window usually indicate? If you have like a couple rooms, then one window's up higher. Okay. Bathrooms or kitchens, usually they put those windows up higher. Little too, right? They're or smaller, or sometimes, you know, like the transom windows, just to get light in there, but, but they're not, you know, they don't want the visibility. What about uh, when you're crawling through and you find a, a floor right vent, what's right above right? that floor vent? Heating and air conditioning vent. What's up? Up? What's up above there? Here's our window. torch, guys. That window. Ready to light? Right. Yep. Just little things that you need to think about. Look at the chug now. Look at the color of the smoke. Look at the intensity. Look at the push. So, is it burning all the way back down into the hole? Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. So maybe too rich in the hole, right? Not enough oxygen. Right. One of the two. You've definitely Let's got the. You've it. definitely got the. So you want to. Yep. Let's talk about VEIS. We're going to go in over the fire typically. So let that fire go. You're in there, you pop this. So we don't have enough yet. There we go. Well, you got a lot. So the fire's down here. We open this. See if this smoke's rich enough, ready to burn. Looks like it's it. burning yet. So just because there's no hole through the floor, that floor has been off gassing. We're smoking, the fire from beneath starts that, and it'll start the next room. What can we do to protect this guy doing VEIS? If we close this door a little bit? Sure. All right, now think about when you're doing VEIS. You're creating a flow path from low to high. 
when you get in there. Nice. Um, this is going to be off gas. There's going to be a lot of stuff in there that can burn. How do we tell? How do we tell if that door is open in the back? Remember the thermal the camera? Window. Push. Yeah. Now we get up to the window, we start cracking the window. It takes time. We clear out the window, it takes time. If we don't have a thermal camera, if we can't see that door, our options are left hand or right hand search. That takes time. How much time do we have before this lights off? We don't know. So a couple things we can do. We can the guy's going up the ladder, once he breaks that window, nozzle straight stream right over his head cool the room down. He takes the thermal camera low in the window and he looks for the door. If he takes a pike pole and reaches across, closes the door, how much safer is it? Another thing we learned, Evan Von Quayle took a class, pike pole, hook it on this end, lay it down on an angle into the room. That way when you're coming around the room, if you feel that, you know that's your way out. Uh, Would you yeah. steam the victim though if you hit Steam's it with the hook? If it's that hot in there? You're dead. The victim's chances of survival are, are, are a lot less, but you never know. It might be under a bed, might be hiding, might be hiding somewhere. Still, if you if it's safe enough for you to get in there and make that that catch, you can. Um, so we'll close it back up a little bit here. What's the quickest way to get that fire knocked down? Suffered. Suffocated. All right, let's see it. You just want to suffocate, or you want to put water in there and suffocate it? Water. So Take let's do. Ship. We got two nozzle guys. When you guys are standing right in front, again, once this thing gets hot, it's going to start exploding out. So we had 10-foot fireballs, so try not to go right in front. So look at the steam conversion. Also look at the steam conversion coming out. We still got the roof open or no? No. No. You got the roof open? Yeah. So watch the steam travel through the whole house. Now what it, what it does also, Actually up. you got flame coming out up there. So let's throw a little bit more water in there. Close it up. And we're also getting air gaps here, so it's starting to bend, so we're still sucking air in. But you can visibly see what's going on. Start thinking ahead of the game. As these vent, as these vent points fail, as you start opening up windows, you start getting other stuff happening. You're the BC, you're the guy in charge, start thinking of other lines. Because if that fire is still going, you got more air going to the fire, it's going to start growing. But look at the amount of flame we're getting, look at the amount of push we're getting, look at the push coming out. Try and light this stuff up. Anyway. We're getting pushed into the attic everywhere also. Remember that fire is building up heat and pressure. You guys want to see a good example of heat and pressure? So we'll close this up. Where's all the pressure going? Anywhere that it can. Yeah. So we're pushing everywhere out. Let's put water guys around the door so we don't lose our door please. So we'll open it back up. And what happens is bi directional to unidirectional. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yep. that, that's going to be more common tax now than ever. If we call this the alpha. alpha. Sure. So, guys, here's what we're going to do Zito's going to play officer. This is going to be our alpha side. And we're going to pretend that the front door is up here okay. and this is a walkout, okay? So he pulls up, the engine company pulls up. What's showing up front? So essentially on the 22's on scene, I got smoke and fire, uh, the Charlie side, two-story single family home. I'm out doing a 360, whatever command. Yep. So he's out doing a 360. Now reading your neutral plane at yep. the front door, popping your right. front door, pulling your hose on, doing all that stuff. Walk around. This would be the basement window, right? Yep. So heavily out the Charlie side basement fire, right? So if we the central whatever command, we're off with the standard lead out to the Charlie side, transitional attack from the basement side. So we'll take the hoses at, around that way. This whole thing is sealed up, guys. Everything is sealed up on this side. Look at the difference in the smoke from what's in there before to what's in there now. Will that light off on its own eventually? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's talk about that. The, the most dangerous thing we do is when we go in, we don't know where the fire is at, right? When it's just full <laughs> of smoke, we got we to gotta find where the fire is at first. So by doing that 360, we identify there's a walkout. If you don't do that 360, you pull up on this side, you got fire through or smoke through the roof. Don't assume that's an attic fire. Do that 360, use your tick, look at the windows, and you say, all right, it's hottest down here. Let's see the fire is down here. 
it just gotten there its way up from the bench. Instead of going through that front door, and we'll let's mimic that now. Yep, right. So, so let's those lines around the front door over here. This is front door. Right here. The front door is over there, so we're gonna instead of instead of going through the front door, we're gonna go through the through the Charlie. Yeah. So you guys call it. I'll open the door. You guys are ready. Go ahead. Ready on the hose lines. Lights off. We're going water in low into the intake because we just created the intake. Always want to fight from the inlet side, right? And we close it down if we still have door control. If not, we can make a small hole, dump 200 gallons of water in in a, in a hole like that. We don't need to create the hole quick and friction with it. Why don't we just do that and test it? And think about that as an attic fight, right? We just put a hole in the ceiling, we just shove a fog nozzle up there, that's compartment, compartmentized, and the water's going to dissipate that because it's, it's in the one room. Now, this fire is not going to go out anymore because we have a nice gap right along the side. Um, if you guys want to see how much, how much different, come on over here. When he was talking about the woods that burn and how they burn, we can also show you, so if you want to back up a little bit, we'll show you two things at once here. Back up, take a knee. So hold the camera in front of his face. We're going to aim at the side over here. You're going to aim at it, and we're going to hold it. So show him right where the fire's at, and look on the camera what he's seeing. Now squirt the water. Watch through the camera. Can you see where yeah. the water's going, exactly what you're doing? Yep. Put it right into the fire room if you can, right in that gap. Looking right through the camera, you can see exactly where it's going. If you guys want to take a look at it, if you haven't seen that before, you can actually see the black from the hose line and going right where he wants to go and seeing it right on the right on the thermal. So what I'm telling you is rather than rather than spraying water everywhere, stick the camera in front of his face and away it'll go. Uh, so two, two, two different types of wood. Remember we were talking about OSB? A lot more glue than this, than the plywood. Look at which one's burning first. Yeah. OSB is definitely burning away. And it's burning away right where all the heat sinks were. You can see all the all the staples going through. They created the heat sink and they're actually getting it to light off. All right, let's get it to light up again. Yep, let's read that smoke. So we're looking at volume, velocity, color, and density, right? Velocity is a lot greater than it was. That house is charged. So see if you can light it up. Can like you do it by opening up? the can you do it just by opening the front door? Yeah. Shut the shut the top, get it to knock, knock it down again. Got the roof. Look at the pressure. Where'd it go? Look at your, your, your BEIS room. Yep. That getting ready to light off? Ah, 100 percent The fire came from here and lit the smoke off coming out here. Watch what happens in the room. Oxygen mixing right here, eventually it's gonna go all the way back in. Alright, so let's get let's open the roof up a little bit and then we'll pull the front door. Pull the front door. Oh, too late. Go ahead, pull the front door now. All right, two lines. Can we knock that fire down? We can try. Give it a shot. So that would be an attack line, and would that be a second line or a backup line? Second, second line. There's some confusion on that. Watch your conditions. Close your door if it's still intact. Control your flow. Now we're starting to lose a. We're starting to lose that room. Will that light up, Jenny? So BEIS room, why are we getting so much push out of it? That hole is in the floor. Starting to get a hole in the floor now and before it was off gas. So if we start to lose the building, even if we don't lose the roof, open that one, open that one. We start to lose the building. Hold off on water for a little bit. What's happening? So the oxygen was introduced, it actually started like here, and lighting off the smoke and pulling its way back in. Because the fuel was there, we had the heat, we just looking for gas. So shut it down, do it again. You want to recreate that basement fire? Open up the second floor here. Stairwell open. Stairs are open. We're going to make our attack. Basement window goes like the guys in California. How long did it take to light off? The flame's coming out in seconds, right? Now, did it light off from the heat coming here and going back down, or did it light off this way? Either way, it can happen. 
So we've had it where this is actually flaming and licking up here. We'll start the roof on fire and start that on fire. Um, we've also had that one start on fire and come back down and, and light off you the other You put some water stuff. underneath their shit, just underneath. Curse gets angry when we burn up his saw horses. Okay. All right, see if you can knock it down again. Who's making the call? How are you going to do it? Way, water in, close the door if you can. If not, fight it from the inlet versus the outlet. Close it. Knock it down, let it reset. If you can, just close it up to a gap of a, of a, just enough to get your nozzle in there and keep flowing water in. I'm gonna get the best of both worlds. You're getting water in, a little yeah, bit of. She's still coming from that other door. Look what it does to your fire. Yeah, it's almost instantaneous. As long as that box is sealed. So now we're going more defensive. Now we start the chambers there. <laughs> chambers, good. Chambers. <laughs> guys from Chicago are there. To, Open that uh, one just to crack. Older Hoffman guys like myself are there, just and I crack. start cracking windows. So I start cracking. The second floor window is gone. Get rid of it. Now what are we thinking? Then? Start thinking more lines. That fire start going. If we can't get it under control. Start thinking more lines because that fire is going to get going because we have more oxygen to it. So we lose the front door, front door burns off. Give me a little water on the way. We have enough fuel in there. Yeah, yeah, right. yep. And don't forget, we touched on it earlier, don't forget the importance of having someone on that seaside um, telling you what kind of smoke they're seeing if windows go if they got fire smoke or fire coming from the eaves, because you may not see that from the A side. So the importance of that communication, and that could be the RIT team too. RIT team, if you know guys are on the second floor, throw ladders, do your constant 360s. Let's see water in there, see if you can get it knocked down now, the vents are open. As an officer, as your, as your guys, once you start hearing those windows open and that crack, again, air in direct correlation to fire growth. Start thinking more lines, more water, uh, do your job faster. So straight stream, more reach, more penetration. Farther down the hall, 60 to 80 feet in a typical room if you're down on the floor, you can get it up towards the ceiling and, and have that much reach. I like personally when I first go in and I'm owning a space, I like a, a small fog pattern. You're going to get a lot more room and a lot less movement. Yeah, you're going to push some of that heat and smoke, but I'm usually in uh, zero visibility conditions anyway when I'm going in. So, um, your call benefit to both is there. Steam uh, fog pattern. You're going to get more steam conversion quicker, unless you're breaking it up off the ceiling. Uh, I'm sorry, fog stream. You're going to get more steam conversion quicker. Straight stream. You're going to get more penetration, uh, more reach, more accuracy. What we're talking about with when you do that shift technique, right? Where you open a door, you throw some water in there, a fog is going to give you more steam. It's going to give more smaller particulate in the fire. So it would convert heat more easily. Cunder, put your hand open up. The, open up the first floor door. Straight. And then our, our standards in our, in our uh, pre connects, you can break that off to a saber tip. We're set up for a fog initially, but if you gotta go, you can always go to that saber. Take it all the way up. Let it hang there, take it off. Really well. So, defensive fire at this point, starting to pull back, worry about our collapse zones, worry about your exposures, right? More lines, more exposure protection. Thunder, I want you to be right about here. Face them. Tick cameras, we need tick cameras. Right behind Rick here. Yep. All right, your guys are coming out of the building. Cunder, take a step over towards the stand over there and turn around. Check it here. Now you're using yeah. that pinpoint, the crosshair of the square. What's it reading? 190. 185. 180. 180, 190. How is his gear? How is this gear desaturated? Can you feel any heat yet? Yeah. A little bit? A little bit. 
lid just starting to feel the heat and he was up there for 10 or 15 seconds. Remember your gear works through saturation. And it's going to desaturate, it's going to desaturate in and out at the same time. Don't forget to check his pinch points. If he's got the air back on, pulling here and here, that's where it's going to be the hottest. It just gives you a baseline. It's not going to tell you how much his gear is saturated, but it's going to tell you how hot they want to come out. And you can check him 15 or 20 seconds later if he was at 150 or 250. You can see he's desaturating. You can have him open up his coat and check him real quick. Little bit. Remember, first part of the fire, limited manpower, might not be able to do it. But remember, your guys are getting saturated. Their gear is filling up with heat. And that is getting freaking hot. Can somebody take the regular hose line and spray the doors on the firehouse? Leave it out, Chick. Ah, I say let it go. <laughs> the BC said let it go. Just spray the, spray the whole doors and everything up there. Shirt and boots. Put that boot in the fire, Chick. Oh! Spray the boot. Now you can put that out. Yeah. Alright, put them all out. Yeah. Ooh, cool. Somebody, uh, Nick, can you grab that dumpster? Wheel it over here, please. Look at this flat zone. That's why we park on corners, too, because it's going to fall towards the flat end. So, to review, to review, we went over a lot volume, velocity, density, color for smoke. We went over go, no go decision making. What are your four things we need for go, no go decision making? Neutral plane, where? 50%. What's the temperature? 500 degrees. What about your velocity? What do we need? A little push to tell you how big the fire is, right? And flaming. Flaming can again be up here in the smoke or fingers coming this way. That tells us that they're go, no go decision making. Doesn't mean we're not going to go, it means we're going to control that environment because 90% of the fuel is from here down. That's where our neutral plane is, 10% of the gear up. What else did we learn about? Gear saturation. We learned about differences in our thermal imaging cameras. Our thermal imaging cameras are drastically different, even though they do the same thing. The older one we have, three, three different modes. And the modes change as it, the color scale changes as it changes. This one, one color scale on it, and it doesn't change. It just changes from fire from search mode to fire mode and the color scale does not change. This one does. Ambulance crew, situational awareness camera, slow search with it versus directing your crew's officer camera, all right? That's what we have right now until we get more money and then we can buy better cameras for everybody. Any questions, comments, concerns? Anybody have any stories they want to add about stuff that they learned along the way and fires you had that pertain to what we're doing? They had one up north. Uh, Ray Ritter and Lincheski just got promoted uh, going into a townhome. The front of the townhome was two stories. The back of the townhome was wide open. It had a wreath over the fireplace and a Christmas tree next to it. Wreath into the Christmas tree. Again, filled up that whole thing. We're talking about volume of smoke. They had a little bit coming out the front door. As they opened the front door, they pulled the hose line, did their thing. And we weren't too worried about door control at the time. Air in, fire growth. Belden's going to the roof at the same time, getting ready to vent the windows on the front. They get in, Ray turns around, he starts pulling at his hood to see if he's got a hood on. He says, holy shit, it's getting hot quick. And Lenny looks at him and goes, oh man, it's, it's really getting hot. And they're spraying water the whole time. They both back out. They said within 10 to 15 seconds of them backing out, it blew out the front door. At the same time, Belden's on the roof, pops the window. He said, explosive, uh, explosive, gases he said they, as soon as they came out they lit off and blew out 10 feet he said then they sucked back in blew out the next window he was between the two windows ladders on the other side he said he's watching the timing actually when it sucked back in he went to the ladder and slid the rungs down if you think something's wrong in there let people know get your guys out regroup don't forget about door control if you shut a door even an interior door you've got you know anywhere between seconds water's your friend don't forget to spray everything cool it down cathedral ceilings because that's what it was we're going into a townhouse you may not expect that cathedral ceiling but that was a cathedral ceiling so that smoke filled up from the top all the way down or if you pull up to the front door you say all right it's only two feet down of smoke before it started coming out well it could be 10 12 feet and that's all that all that smoke is potential fire so think about district 21 older dimensional lumber except for the newer homes that are converted over 
versus District 24, which is all the particle board OSB. You won't find a sheet. Engineer choice. Out. It's all about it's all about money. They're building them cheaper, but they're going to burn faster. Yeah, they hold up to walk on them. They don't squeak and all that other stuff. But as soon as you put fire to them, you've seen what it can do. The last added fire 21 district, that roof was made out of one by four. It wasn't the plywood. A lot of those houses have the old one by four. Good class, bad class. Good. Like it? We got to learn something, I hope.